This is a short film to introduce you to Tees Tidelands. Environmental organisations have come together to restore intertidal habitat, to reconnect people with the estuary and realign flood defences. By restoring intertidal habitat, the estuary will be in a better position to deal with sea level rise caused by climate change. New flood defences will protect homes and industry, but will also allow the tide to return to areas lost to the sea over 200 years ago. The Tees estuary was infilled. Defences were put around the edge of that infill, and then industry took up some of that land, but not all of it. Those defences need looking at again because they've come to the end of their lifetimes. They need rebuilding. We can consider what's the best place to do it ecologically, but provides the same level of flood resilience that would have been. That allows us to restore some of the habitats that were there in these Tees Tidelands areas. Tees Tidelands will provide an integrated nature-based solution to manage flood risk and to create a better environment for the people of Teesside and of course the diverse wildlife that still uses the area today. If I'd been standing here in 1800, I would have been in the middle of the River Tees estuary, an area of about 55 square kilometres and a complex ecosystem of intertidal mud, sandbanks, salt marshes, filled with a variety of life, seals, porpoises, salmon, a, an absolute ecological jewel. In the early 19th century, all this changed and the estuary evolved into what we see today. To many, industrial development was seen as progress and the marshes simply as waste land. Over the last 200 years, large parts of the estuary have been taken for industrial expansion. The rapid industrialization of the estuary brought economic prosperity to the area and to the country as a whole. Industrial Teesside has and continues to drive economic success and provides a livelihood for many thousands of people. Much of the economic success, however, has been at the expense of the environment. In the 1970s, the River Tees was considered ecologically dead. Salmon and seals had disappeared and only about 10% of the original estuary habitat remained. There was little or no consideration for the impact of climate change. So we're now left with a legacy of flood risk across the Tees estuary. What's the current condition of the estuary in terms of ecology? So the Tees estuary, um, due to rapid industrialisation, has lost approximately 2,000 hectares of coastal habitat. However, the coastal habitats that remain are of really high ecological value and have a number of international conservation designations. But again, due to industrialisation, um, they're under a lot of pressure. So some of the physical defences in the estuary are preventing it from um, behaving naturally making it more difficult for the estuary to deal with issues like poor water quality and putting additional strain on the habitats that do exist. Removing a structure such as this would be absolutely fantastic. Coastal habitats are already under huge threat um, due to urbanisation and industrialisation, but with climate change and rising sea level, we get something called coastal squeeze, where the habitats are being reduced and, and squeezed out. So by removing these physical structures and allowing the habitats to expand back to their former reach is absolutely fantastic and provides them with that resilience for the future. Each organisation has done great work protecting and creating habitat in the estuary. At the time the barrage was built, obviously it changed the environment in the area and a fish pass was built around the barrage to allow fish passage to continue past the site. It uh, was considered at that time to be a suitable structure and uh, capable of moving fish upstream. Well, our knowledge and understanding of fish passage has improved over the, over the years all, all around the, the country and the world. And at this site, we've seen the potential for improving fish passage. So fish can get past this site, but we feel with a bigger and better fish pass, we're going to have more opportunities to fish to move upstream to their spawning grounds. Today we're down at Hartlepool, Victoria Dock, and here we are at Terry, which is the Tees Estuary Restoration Initiative which is a project that we started about a year ago now with some funding through the Green Recovery Challenge Fund. And our aim here was to get a base going 
on the Tees estuary where we could start growing on and developing seagrass and native oyster for reintroduction into the estuary. We had these species in the Tees estuary once upon a time like we had plenty of other things in the Tees estuary. Over the years, uh, industrialisation, water quality, wave action for increased boat movements, uh, sediment pollution and contamination, the species have been lost. But we're now back with a river that's improving and um, with an estuary that really needs, like the river does, a helping hand to bring it back up to as near a good a state as we can get it. So these species are really important, both for the ecology, but also for the protection of the shoreline. So seagrass will take the sting out of waves coming on shore, and we're looking at climate change adaptation and sea level rises. Similarly, native oyster will help create that reef effect and stop erosion from getting in. But I mean, this is part of a wider uh, scheme of works that we're doing on the Tees estuary. So here we are at Paul Track Marsh, uh, one of our nature reserves uh, right at the centre of the Teesside conurbation. Uh, fantastic area of wetlands, beautiful for birds, otters, uh, and great for people as well. Yeah, so in 2013, we had a tidal surge. We had a lot of river water coming down the river. Then we had high tides and strong winds coming from, from, the, uh, from the east, which pushed the river up uh, and resulted in a, in a great sort of overflow of the riverbank from, from the Tees itself. The whole site became flooded. Uh, I came down the next day and I have to say it looked beautiful. It looked like a great inland lake uh, with a few trees and things standing out of it. But, but the really sad thing was because, because the, the marsh has become disconnected from the river, we couldn't get the water off again. Uh, and the water sat there like a great giant salt pan for the whole of the summer and it slowly evaporated and it got more and more saline which killed a lot of the vegetation, killed a lot of the trees and did quite a lot of damage to the marsh. Now that was a, a one in a hundred year event. However, with global warming and sea level rise, the predictions are that that's going to become much more frequent, perhaps even in every five, ten years. Now, if that's the case, we, we can't continue to care for the nature reserve and manage both the nature and the access on the site in the same way. And we've got to get that connection back to the river so we can allow the marsh to inundate um, naturally with, with tidal change. So this is, a, this is a great piece of work that we're doing that's really going to save the marsh uh, in the face of climate change, but also allow it to function properly as part of a floodplain. The Environment Agency's Greetham Cell Scheme was completed in 2018 and is a great example of this more integrated approach. Flood banks were realigned to create 30 hectares of intertidal habitat while also providing modern defences for homes and industry. Breaching the defences at Greetham allowed the tide to return to areas won from the sea over 200 years ago. Tees Tideland will not only deliver improved flood defences and additional habitat, but will deliver wider environmental benefits. Here at RSPB Saltone, which is a nature reserve on the North Tees estuary, uh, so there's a section in our wild Saltone bit, which is just over to the left here, uh, which was farmland until two years ago. We've taken that back into our own direct management and we're letting it sort of rewild. We're seeing some scrub regeneration already. And we've created a space 15 metre wide corridor that we want to have as a hedgerow and a wildlife corridor, into which we want to put this footpath which will connect Coot and Beauty Village with the reserve here, and then link in with the England Coastal Footpath and the this eight, eight mile walk around the what would have been the edge of the estuary back in the day. Most of the estuary has been lost over the last 300 years due to the development of uh, Teesside for industry. Uh, so what's left is quite a precious fragment now. So behind us you've got wet grassland, uh, home to breeding abisset and lapping in the summer. Uh, behind you is some reed bed. We've had breeding bitten two years ago. So a great spot for wildlife, an area that we want to put some more wildlife back into it and try and recover some of the estuary that's been lost over the last 300 years. Tees Estuary Recovering Nature as a Nature Recovery Project is one of 12 national nature recovery projects that has been commissioned by DEFRA and Natural England to work with local partners in a region to deliver a landscape scale nature recovery. Part of the reason the estuary isn't as good as it could be is because it just doesn't have that natural extent of habitat that should be there, whether that's mudflat or salt marsh. And uh, taking away these barriers just allows nature to do its thing and they'll restore mudflats and restore salt marsh and, and all of the benefits those salt marsh provide. 
So this is called intertidal habitat and that is the habitat that sits between the terrestrial dry land and essentially the sea. And this habitat that we're, this is salt marsh that we're actually leaning on right now. Yeah. And just in front of us, we have intertidal mud. And these are some of the most biologically rich and diverse habitats in the whole world. So there are thousands of species that rely on this um, on this ecosystem here. In terms of Tees Tideland and the programme we've got to manage flood risk and improve the ecological value of the estuary, what, what's the value of this particular habitat, the salt marsh? So um, salt marsh and, and intertidal habitats like this mud, they have huge wider benefits to us and to our society. Firstly, as we've mentioned, biodiversity, so they're biologically rich. Secondly, they are really valuable breeding ground for juvenile fish, supporting healthy and diverse fisheries. They also store and sequest nutrients. And then most importantly, they really help us and help communities become climate resilient. And these habitats will help protect communities from um, the effects of climate change, rising sea level, um, storm intensification, and then also they will store carbon, and they store carbon at a really high rate, so they store carbon in the mud and in the sediments and within the plants themselves. Tees Tidelands aims to re-engage people with the estuary and help them to understand natural processes. We've been doing a project with the local school children this year, a creative writing project. Uh, and one of the things the project wants to achieve is really increase the awareness of the local community to their flood risk. Life is better by water. We have the care of 2,000 miles of waterway across the country, and the Tees is just part of that, bringing people down, reconnecting them with nature, with activity, getting them fit and healthy. It's about bringing the sort of functionality of nature back into those places and making sure they do connect and work together. Uh, and that the organisations that, that support them work together as well. And, and we've got joined up thinking as well as joined up natural habitat. Today, companies are far more aware of the environmental impact they have, balancing the need to be profitable, but doing so with as low an environmental impact as possible is not easy. Tees Tidelands aims to work with industry and nature conservation bodies. Companies such as Veneta are a great example of this. Here we are in Greenabella Marsh, and who knew about this secret garden? So it's owned by Venator and the chemical site's just over to the side there, of course. But we allow members of the public to use the permissive path to go down and look at the seals, look at the birds, there's a hide down at the bottom. And they may also, as they're looking around, catch the deer, the fox, they might even see an otter. If earlier generations had understood what the impact of their actions would be, both to the wildlife, the environment and in terms of emissions driving climate change, they may have made different choices. Tees Tidelands offers us the opportunity to redress the balance, helping to safeguard the future economic prosperity of Teesside, but in a way that enhances the environment, using nature-based solutions to deliver long-term flood risk management. People love coming here because of the natural environment around them. Uh, and, and I think that's a great opportunity to make sure that we've connected people back to nature and they've got, they've got nature as part of their, their daily experience in their lives. It's a green corridor through our cities. Stockton is a fine example of that. People want to be connected with the waterway. So anything we can do to improve connectivity and the resurgence of life around the river is going to improve that. It gives us the opportunity to realign some of the flood defences. Uh, we can restore the habitats that would have been there being submerged by the tide twice a day. And we can also reconnect a lot of the tributaries to that estuary. We're now part of a much bigger um, jigsaw that's evolved over the last three to four years with loads of players coming in now and actually delivering um, improvements on the ground. So our oh, estuary is really a uh, fun uh, time to be working in the estuary because we're all optimistic that we can, with all of this action, we've got a great chance of attracting some investment, much needed investment, into doing these estuary improvements. Well, ultimately, I think if we do nothing, the North Sea is going to win this contest with climate change. And our chemical plants here, the infrastructure we have around here, will suffer. So I think what we're trying to achieve is a win-win. We're trying to look after business, look after the economy, and to enhance the biodiversity, the habitats, and the environment that we have on our doorstep. 
When we talk together, what is really clear is that we are all deeply passionate and really committed to seeing nature recovered. And so coming together enables us to deliver in a way that is bigger, better, more joined up and will have a bigger impact for nature recovery for this region. Thank you.